Asylum for the Insane, A History of the Kalamazoo State Hospital, presented by Dr. William Decker, Distinguished Life Fellow of the American Psychiatric Association. And this window that you see here, if you look in back of you, you'll see two large uh, windows and a wall over there. Now, the window that you see on the screen is in my home. We and Dr. Van Dusen uh, donated the money for <coughs> the library. He stipulated that um, a room be reserved as a meeting place for the, the monthly meetings of the physicians in Kalamazoo. When that library was demolished in 1954, uh, members of the Kalamazoo Academy of Medicine were invited to come and take uh, artifacts from that uh, building that they uh, wished to do so. And uh, I came, I was uh, new in Kalamazoo, I, was, uh, I came in 1953, so only a year being here I thought I was rather presumptuous, but I'm that kind of fellow anyway. So <clears throat> I, <coughs> I went to the library and I picked up uh, two of these windows and two large oak chairs. The two oak chairs were in a uh, sorry state and in uh, need of repair, refinishing, and I took care of that and then donated them to the Kalamazoo State Hospital and Steve Schreer, uh, the media specialist at the hospital for many years, used them uh, when he uh, produced some of the programs for the uh, hospital. And uh, these Plans are the, uh, what were known as the Kirkbride Plan uh, for Asylums. Dr. Kirkbride had written a treatise in 1854 uh, how to construct a, uh, an asylum. And uh, this particular sketch is referred to as the bat wing style of asylum construction. The, uh, that consisted of a central portion that you see uh, representing the uh, body of the bat and then two lateral wings representing the wings of the uh, bat. That construction, type of construction, uh, predominated uh, throughout the country until about uh, the end of 1880s. Then that type of construction was abandoned. And this is a gentleman that I just referred to, Dr. Thomas Story Kirkbride. He was a superintendent of the, uh, Phil, uh, the Pennsylvania Hospital uh, from uh, early or mid-1800s uh, until his death in 1883. And uh, this is an artist uh, conception. I already mentioned it uh, briefly that uh, is on the cover of the book of the hospital when it would be completed in 1859. And uh, this is a large expansive entrance coming in. The entrance came to the uh, asylum uh, was a, what is now Wheaton Avenue. But Wheaton Avenue originally uh, did not uh, extend up to Oakland Drive, or as it was known at that time, Asylum Avenue. Uh, it wasn't until the late 1800s, I think it was 1894, something like that, when Wheaton Avenue was extended from Davis Street to um, uh, Asylum Avenue. And uh, the entrance to uh, the asylum was then at that point, and in this nice curve uh, fashion, back to uh, south, to the, uh, this ornate entrance. Note that at that time, uh, the uh, asylum was only two stories. In uh, 1906, a uh, third story was added on each of the lateral wings. Also note the beautiful cupolas uh, atop the uh, center, particularly the center portion of the building, but also in the latter wings, the um, extensions uh, graced those cupolas as well. They were removed in 1933. And here you have a close-up view of uh, the entrance to the asylum, uh, which was opened in 1859. 
a, a female patient was admitted to the asylum on April 23rd of 1859. I could find no indication of why this female patient uh, was admitted at that time, but the formal opening uh, was on August 29th of 1859. Originally, uh, both male and <coughs> female uh, patients were admitted to the asylum, but from the outset, uh, there was always a problem with overcrowding. In fact, as soon as the uh, asylum <coughs> was open, it was oversubscribed. The, uh, the superintendents of the poor, who had been responsible for the insane as well as the poor, uh, uh, cried bitterly that uh, there was not enough room to move uh, the insane out of their um, almshouses and into the asylum. And this is the famous uh, gatehouse. Now that uh, the names uh, and the names of these buildings and many of the functions around the hospital change. This uh, has uh, been known as the gatehouse, the porter's cottage, or the entrance uh, cottage. It was completed in approximately 1888, and um, <clears throat> uh, the problem was that if, uh, that spurred the uh, construction of this building was that a lot of unwelcome people were entering into the uh, hospital or the asylum grounds and uh, in order to control uh, the uh, access to the uh, asylum they decided to build this porter's uh, cottage. They also uh, at one time considered uh, putting a fence around the entire asylum but that uh, was not uh, executed, but they did build this very nice ornate uh, uh, fence around Gate Cottage. Gate Cottage is uh, still uh, in existence and currently is not in use, but um, Sharon uh, Ferraro, who is here in the audience tonight, gave a nice little talk about the, the future of uh, Gate Cottage and uh, perhaps uh, later on she'll make a few comments and let you know what the plans are for Gate Cottage. And <coughs> this is uh, Oakview Cottage, and uh, Oakview was uh, originally uh, the home of the hospital Stewart, and uh, Stewart uh, now is referred to primarily as a business manager. But uh, in 1891, it was converted to a residence for 10 female uh, patients. In 1914, it was again reverted back to use by the uh, steward of the hospital. Later on, uh, physicians lived in that house, uh, Dr. Harley uh, Sears, an assistant medical superintendent, lived there in the 30s, Dr. Schreer, who was my predecessor as a medical superintendent, lived in that hospital for a short time in 1941 before he uh, enlisted in the Army during World War II. Uh, Dr. Holder moved into the house in 1945 when he returned from uh, service, and uh, he lived there until his death in 1960. Then I moved into it. I lived in that home until I retired in 1987. As I indicated, uh, overcrowding was always a problem right from the outset, and uh, in uh, the 1870s, uh, the legislature began to move again to uh, build in addition additional buildings at the hospital, and they built this building, which was then referred to as the mail department. The first building of the asylum then became known primarily as the female department, and the males in the female department were moved into this building, and uh, the original building then became uh, solely the um, residence of female patients. 